Mount Thomas Station to Sergeant Croydon. Mount Thomas Station to Sergeant Croydon. Sergeant Croydon, you there, boss? One call's enough, son. You'll wear out the ether. I didn't know where you were. You're not interrupting my leave with business, are you? You turn the tractor off for crying out loud? No way, boss. Good boy. Go. Can you turn the tractor off? The battery stuff, there's no way I'd get it started again. Go! Fax came in for you from Ian Nankervis. He's got a virus. He's scratching his horses. Read me the fax. Dear Tom, we've got a virus. Scratch us from Monday. Sorry, Ian Nankervis. Fax him back. Thanks for nothing. Next time, use the phone. The police fax is for police business. You got that? Oh, in regards to the considerably better half. Get that? Got it. Sergeant Harrison turned up yet? No, not yet. You better get onto the operational channel. Have fun. Mount Thomas Station, back on. Thanks, Mount Thomas. Noel Harrison, mate, has got this big, bald head. Yeah, Nick said, the skull. Yeah, polishes it with Mr Sheen, and when the light's right, you can see the white marks, mate. Yeah, sure. Eats Connie's for brekkie. Thanks, PJ. Pleasure. Barry Raymond Maxwell. Apples, do not approach, he's yours. Apples, do not bruise, or mine. Even the locals go crazy. I nearly got out this time. Where were you going? Oh, little Murray. Three days fishing, and then he comes to me and he says he cancels my leave, and he takes his. And the sergeant's promises aren't worth the breath they're carried on. We want this bugger. Comfortably under. Yeah, put your foot down, Stuckliff. Slowing. Yeah, bastard. Who is it? It's Peter Sackler, it's PJ's cousin. Yo, Nick! Oh, Jesus. A skull. Dozen slabs. On the knocker. Deliver into the race course for me Monday, Dick? No, Henry will. I'll beat the races. Uh, you and everybody else. Ah, uh, a bit different this year, Chris. I'm penciling for a bookie. Lucky you. Yeah. Oh, meet man for you, Chris. And what the hell's a Mount Thomas Massacre? Who the hell has ordered a Mount Thomas Massacre? A uh, young bloke said he wanted a $500 trifecta. Eyes to yourself. She's married to a copper. Look, it's easier to sell him something off the top shelf. I think I'd like a Mount Thomas massacre if I won $500. It's in the cocktail book under the bar. Look, you're saving my life, Ros. You're a star. Now, what's the meat man got for me? Snaggers, chops, steak. Yeah, snaggers, chops, steak. We're knee deep in sophisticates. You know where the cool room is? Happy lumping. <sighs> Roll on Monday night. Go on, you make a fortune every cup weekend. My age. Class hasn't even started yet. Caravan Park's only half full. Don't. I'm serious, Chris. It's as quiet as Christmas Day. Apples, what about him? I want to know the minute he shows. Of course, you've got a death wish. Hang on to it. I know him. Oh, local's mine. The casuals 
have been instructed to call you. If this two-pot screamer crosses my threshold, that was known to resemble a hotel room before you two arrived. Well, you can't choose your own eh? That was your excuse 12 months ago. Won't happen again. You bet it won't. Way. Where the casuals can't fail to see it. There's one on every board and wall in the pub. 50 foot of this place and I thump it. Before or after Apple stumps the try out of you. Again. Yeah, the cup's intact as we speak. What I need mainly is improvers, Phil. Well, didn't you run a couple of Warwick Nabeel the other week? <laughs> and they're only going to grow old and fat in the paddock, mate. Well, what about welters? Maidens? Relieved himself on your front fence, Mrs Quinn. Brazenly. Two welters? Fit enough to run Monday? Locals wouldn't do that. We'll give them some exercises, smother them up against the fence. The steward's a cobber of mine. <laughs> Good man. Thanks, Phil. Well, have you got a description for us? You'll never find him. We'd have our work cut out, that's for sure. That's right. He's the one I came to complain to. Boss, Mrs Quinn has a complaint. A male person relieved himself on Mrs. Quinn's front fence, boss. Part of life's rich tapestry, Mrs. Quinn. The Mount Thomas Cup used to belong to Mount Thomas, Sergeant. One of these days. Ah! Welcome to you, Noel. Slackness is a cancer, Tom. Go on. Kicked a couple of backsides already, have you, Noel? Uh, Sergeant Harrison, Constable Wayne Patterson. Sergeant? Hmm. I sat off the highway with a view of the radar position for ten minutes. Two dozen vehicles dropped below the speed limit, half a kilometre from the position. Suddenly. Amazingly. Where was the radar set up? The bend. How long has it been on the bend? You'll have to ask Nick. I did. A week. Constable Schultz called it a good spot. I called it overexposed. No wonder his numbers are down. Traffic is getting slack, Tom. Buried Constable Schultz in a shallow grave, did you know? We came past the motel. There was an altercation involving two male persons over the alleged double booking of a room. <laughs> Gordon's overbooked again. He won't die wondering whether a dollar passed him by. Can I help you, sir? <laughs> what do you reckon? I've just been assaulted and robbed. Fifteen thousand dollars. We'll come through. We'll take a look at that cut. I'll live. It's the cash I'm worried about. I'm a bookie. That fifteen grand was mistake for the weekend. Who's PJ when he's home, anyway? I'm talking to him. Yeah? Well, the mongrel that did this said to say it was apples. Apples whacked you? Barry Raymond Maxwell. Well, he didn't exactly leave me his full name, son. Just dropped me and grabbed the cash. Said to tell PJ g'day from Apples. So you don't know for certain it was Barry Raymond Maxwell? I know it for certain from his own words, out of his own mouth. Tell PJ g'day from Apples. Right. Let's see. You got a glimpse of a bloke in a balaclava and sunnies. You got whacked. You're flat out on the floor with your ears ringing. Well, how can you be sure what you heard, mate? I'm sure. So why aren't you out there arresting him? Leave it with us, Mr Meadows. Stay at the Imperial. That's right. We'll be in touch. Better get that cut scene to, eh? Yeah, well, you just do your job and get my steak back. You'd better watch out, mate. Skulls are off. Yeah, he's been in. Taking Maggie out on a tour of inspection. We're making our getaway now. What are we doing? Looking for someone who's more than likely committed their first assault and robbed. That? Well, they're just incompetent at it. If Apples had whacked Charlie Meadows, Charlie'd be on a life support. Plus, I know for a fact that Apples hasn't left Melbourne yet. Well, how good are your sources? Impeccable. 
Collingwood coppers had him still at home 50 minutes ago. And why didn't you tell Charlie Meadows this? None of his business. You got the Collingwood coppers watching Apple's house. Underutilized resources, mate, or wasted resources. All right. So who's taken Apple's name in vain? And why? Uh, that's what we're going to find out. Poor sweetheart. What's his story? Uh, he's a total pain in the ass. Works out of West you belong. The boss holds him up every year to prove he's the soft touch he tells us he is. Oh, Mags, you poor, poor darling. To a mate. Good thing you booked, Mr. Shearer. We're packed out. I've got an annual booking, mate. Bugger sleeping in a tent in Anzac <laughs> Park. No, look, um, I think it's one night in advance. Spot on. Take one night out of this, keep the change. Oh, gee, thanks a lot. And uh, park this lot in the safe for me, mate. 450 bucks. Yep, no problems. I'll just get your receipt. Bobby! How are you, mate? <laughs> Oh, I'm knackered. We've got three extra casual staff, plus Ross here, and we're still flat out. Bobby Shearer, Ross Patterson. Bobby's a racing rider. Comes up every year for the light relief. Always threatening to make us famous. This year? Sure. It's this bug of his play, Uh, It's going in the safe. Damn good idea, too. I'll ask. Don't give it to me. No way. Till Monday morning. Don't for Christ's sake, give it to me. Monday Even morning? Even if I beg. Got that, Ross? Oh, I've got the picture. <laughs> Warn the casuals. Tell them I might even abuse them, and I apologise here and now, in case, in advance. And they'll think none the less of you, Bobby. How's Tom Croydon? Oh, happy as a pig in muck. Still running the event, then? You bet. See you soon for a jar. Righto. So is Wayne still expecting you to do the sales on the top of all this? Oh, yeah, I've got to. Mrs Bryce has taken the kids away for the weekend. Apples? Mm-hmm. DJ and Apples? Yep. I heard that he and PJ went at each other for nearly half an hour behind the library last year. <laughs> um, Ned, what's his name? Said it was over a woman? Apples was Christine's brother. He didn't like PJ sniffing around. So what happened to her? Well, she won 25 grand in tats and went to Argentina. <laughs> Good <laughs> on So what are we looking for? Someone who's probably never had 15 grand in his kick, he'll advertise. Keep on your toes. This is the uniform, he'll probably bowl. What's up? Charlie Meadows, bookie. Got rolled 15 grand. He'd be a bookie. Keep your eyes open for inexplicable wealth. Of course. Who belongs to this lot? Grant Maxwell. Yeah? Where is he? Well, he was here. Where'd he get to? Um, I don't know. That's his third Mount Thomas massacre. He had the wobbles. Should be horizontal. That's the Maxwell's for you. Ah, uh, Maxwell. That's Apple's, uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, Apple's baby brother. Apple's got the brawn. Brown did not get the brains. He, um, flashing money around? No, they're very quiet. He said he won a $500 trifecta. Um, uh, here he comes now. G'day, Grant. Think you dropped something, mate? Two and a half Mount Thomas massacres would fell an ox, Grant. You sure you don't want to lie down? No. I've got rid of most of it. Generally does the trick. Oh, my guts hurt. Charlie Meadows' head hurts, mate. Oh, no, it wasn't hard. He had it coming. Not hard enough. What's he done to you? He jipped me. Last month at Kilmore, he had a horse up at 20s. And I put 50 on it. He'd only give me 10s. I won 500. It should have been 1,000. Mongrel. So what happened to the 500 you won? Well, I lost it back. So you whacked him and you thieved 15 grand to teach him a lesson, right? So where's the rest? I took 500. Mate, he says it was 15 grand. He, he jipped me out of 500. I took 500. Well, how much did he have? Heaps. How much? <sighs> Bundles of 50s, uh, 20s, 10s. 
I, I didn't count it. I don't know, um, 10,000, I suppose. I'm no thief. He's the thief. Well, how much is there? Uh, about 420, some change. Right, um, well, I bought them, seven bucks something. That, 40 bucks. Always wanted one of them. Um, I gave three bucks to a salvo in a pub, and I bought uh, three Mount Thomas massacres, nine bucks each. I always wanted one of them too. Well, add it up, 500 bucks. Yeah, but you could have hidden the rest. I didn't. Look, Meadows is a thief and a liar. So why mention your brother's name? I well, thought you'd throw me off the scent. All right, I'll get the sum sorted out. We gotta charge him, mate. You're a deal, Grant. What are you? A D I double L. Now you got the bail? So what about Mum? Is she at home? Where's PJ? In there. Right, I can wait. Hey, we got the bloke who rolled the bookie. You know, the bookie reckons it was 15 grand. The kid who did it, 500. A local kid, uh, Grant Maxwell. Ah, oh, he's a moron. Runs in the family. Brother of Christine Maxwell and Barry Raymond Maxwell, otherwise known as Apples. PJ was seeing this Christine, wouldn't he? <laughs> yeah, last year. Old Apples didn't get off on the idea of a cop and join up a bumpo with his sister. They used to be pretty good mates before that. Oh, yeah, I heard about the fight. 40 minutes behind the library. Oh, I'll try 10. Christine went off and won tats after that. Some people don't deserve it. Apples. A Tasmanian, is he? No. Yo, Nick! Hey! Who's this? Wayne Patterson. Ah, oh, lucky you. Listen, PJ Ren? No, he's busy. Sorry. Oh. Well, tell him I'll call back later, all right? Thanks, mate. Who's that? That's a Neanderthal. PJ's cousin, Peter Sutcliffe. PJ attracts low life like flies to a scab. Grant's mum can't see a way clear to bail him. Let Ros know we've got a weekend tenant, huh? Sure. Oh, Peter Sutcliffe called in for you? He's coming back. I made it, did he? My word, he did. I've just been home, and I don't remember you asking me you've invited him to stay at our place. Nick, let's talk about it later, right? I've got a statement to take and a charge to lay. Wayne is able-bodied and itching to do the job, aren't you, Wayne? I'm easy. Follow me, sir. Slipped your mind. Nick, it's a couple of days. Mate, he's been here a couple of hours, and the place is a pigsty. He's got his horse stuff all over the house. He's got beer cans, newspapers, there's two overflowing ashtrays. He's gone off and he's left the TV and the radio on and you're telling me it slipped your mind you've invited him to stay. I laid down the conditions, mate. He had to behave and clean up after himself. He trashed a hotel room last year. He got a little carried away. Look, I will keep him in line. I still haven't heard if it slipped your mind you've invited him to stay. Nick, it was always going to be one of those arguments. One of what arguments? Better have later than soon. Because if we'd had it sooner, I'd have said no. Mate, you're unbelievable. You're unbelievable. You owe me. You owe me. I don't know what it is you owe me, but it's going to be something pretty bloody amazing, you rest assured. You owe me. You've got it. Well, how's the statement coming? Fine. Well, does he know what he's doing? Well, he says he does. What do you, mate? Who's been bashing it around? Someone has. Best way to bust them up forever. It's like a neat and tidy little world inside here. Everything where it's supposed to be. Everything needs its mate to work for it to work. Real neat and tight. Hi. Hi. 
Hey, Ross. Wayne call you? Uh, not yet. What about? Uh, weekend tenant. Oh, no problem. Um, he seemed so nice when I was mixing him Mount Thomas massacres. I <laughs> never said he wasn't nice. He's just not very bright. Introduces. Roz, you've met. I served him. I'm not going to call him young Mr. Crim. Oh, pardon my grubby manners. Grant, Roz Patterson from the pub. That's Wayne's missus. She'll be feeding you. Grant Maxwell. Hi. Hi. Um, what do you want for tea? Sausages? Chops? Steak? Anything. Lock up, keep a surprise it is then. How are you, Mrs. Dillon? Well, thanks, Sergeant. Getting nervous? After 17 years. Uh, pie warmers. Of course. I really appreciate this opportunity, Sergeant. It's just the start I need. Well, your quote did the job. I feel sorry for Margaret. Yes, well, footy, cricket, catering. You're only as good as your last outing, aren't you? Beautiful. Straight out of the shop. Bench tested? On my kitchen bench. Well, I warned Margaret the year before last. Pie warmers are no different to a pair of shoes. You can hold them together with sticky tape and string for as long as you like, but one day they're going to let you down. Wet feet, cold pies. She just couldn't take the hint. Mate. There you go. Thanks, mate. Now you're being sensible, aren't you? Of course, mate. Good, mate. How are you, Bobby? Great, mate. Good on you. Chrissy? Charlie Meadows around? Charlie Meadows still in here? The one who counted out the exact money for the beer. Oh, Scrooge. No, no, he went up to his room. Ta. I don't get this. I cop a whack. You've got the bloke, and I'm getting a hard time. I mean, that's not how it's meant to be. We've got a $14,500 discrepancy, Charlie. And my word's not good enough. <laughs> It'd be handy if we could put something concrete in front of the magistrate. Bank book. Record of a $15,000 withdrawal this morning. Well, it's the best I can do. No. No, it's not here. Cop this. That's my kick. Till I get to the automatic teller at the bank which I would like to do about now. Thank you very much. Grant Maxwell is still enough to take what he's owed and leave the rest behind. So you reckon Meadows is lying? Yep. So? So you're not gonna like what we're gonna do next. Hey, Chris. What? Clean Charlie Meadows' room. He just moved in this morning. Trust me, Charlie's room needs a clean. Right now. No worries. See? Disgusting. I'll get the Hoover. Five minutes. Okay. Help her out, mate. Start tidying up. We happen to find 14 and a half grand. Mate, don't we need a search warrant? Search warrants are for searching. We're tidying up. Thanks, mate. Are you still ahead? Even further, mate. Oh, how goes it, Bobby? Laughing, mate. <laughs> Gin and tonic? And a whiskey sour. Compliments of the Mount Thomas and District Jockey Club. 
Now, what are we going to do? I don't know what you're going to do, Sergeant. It's entirely up to you, Tom. I do recall vividly writing to you, Margaret. I do recall explaining tactfully that cold pies in the winter weren't acceptable. Not an easy letter to write after 12 years. Unforgettable. Well, you obviously forgot to post it. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here. I posted it with respect and affection. I do recall vividly posting it. And I have a letter of agreement to cater this year's Mount Thomas Cup Day. Barbara has her letter, and I have several thousand dollars worth of food and drink purchased for Monday, in good faith. Meaning in the absence of any advice that my services were no longer required, after 12 years. And my brother's a lawyer. Bottoms up. Nothing's insurmountable. Could be in his car, could be anywhere. Or he could be telling the truth. Maxwell could have stolen a lot. I know Grant, he's a good kid. He's just not the full quit. Mate, he was dumb enough to use his brother's name when he robbed Meadows. He could easily be dumb enough to have taken the lot. You don't know him, mate. Need brand, Nick. Yeah, cornflakes are the go. Get rid of the brand and get some cornflakes in. Can you, Nick? Hey? You wait for your cousin on the other side of that counter. You go now. Oh. Hey, yo, PJ. How are you, Pete? Good, mate. <sighs> Hang on a sec. Um, Skull's gonna be in any minute. Grant's in custody. Whip him out of the cells, eh? I, I haven't finished here. Take it with you, and I want it working by tomorrow. Australia's batting. <coughs> yeah, hey, mate. Listen, I called by home. Mm -hmm. What have you done to the place? Nothing. Not an ounce of damage. No, no damage, mate. Just a mess. Oh. Now, you'll clean up, won't you, mate? I'll get a chick in. No, you'll clean up. Won't mate, you, Pete? Mate, mate. Won't but... you, Pete? All right, all right, PJ, I will. Jeez. Spick and span. Eat your tea off the carpet, all right? I swear. Kilmore Coppers rang. Apple's had tea in a hotel, checked in for the night. He's halfway here. Ah, uh, here's a funeral. Hey, listen. Did you fix up that cow at the pub? Her name is Chris. <clears throat> and she's fine. But we're gonna give the place a miss. Well, they come. Yeah, she's watering the beer. Get out of it. Pretty poor, eh? That's shocking. Uh, plenty of other pubs. Mm, of course. How are the horses? Great, mate. I've worked them and they're gonna go real well. Chris, g'day, it's PJ. Look, is uh, Bob Shearer still in the pub? Great. Well, keep him there, mate. I'll be there in a sec. Ta. Bye. Amazing. It's so simple, really. Two caterers on Monday. St David's police can scrap their sausage sizzle. I told you nothing was insurmountable. Well, bottoms up. So what if it's St David's big fundraiser of the year? I mean, I've got all night to nut out how to put it to them. Bobby. Hey, mate. A bookie by the name of Charlie Meadows. Mongrel. You got mugged today. Fifteen grand. Good. Well, at least he reckons it was fifteen grand. The kid who did it said he took five hundred. Go with the kid. Meadows couldn't lie straight in bed. Where would a bookie hide that sort of cash? Easy. He'd give it to his penciler to hold for him. You wouldn't happen to know who the penciler is, would you? He must be slipping, mate. He's a local bloke. Dick Jacobs? Know where I can find him. Last well, Chris. He, he doubles as a brewery driver. 
thank you very much, mate. I will buy you a beer. Cheers. Oh, I just checked out our brewery driver penciler. I'll be back in Mount Thomas in the morning. And guess who'll be waiting? Good nosh. Mate, anything is better than facing the mess at home and your Darrow cousin. Come on, mate. He's going to be gone Monday morning. Last year, it was the Catholic poor box, sir. Who knows which denomination this year? Well, he won't be stupid enough to try it again. Someone else might. Easy pickings for pilfering punters in need of a bank. One step forward, the Catholics. You look Catholic. Take him with you. There's another one round the corner. PJ's. It hasn't popped up in two years. Giving me five bucks if I can fix it. I've got a wonky hairdryer. Sorry, don't do electrics. Too dangerous. That's electrics. It's a busted spring. Come on. Drink your coffee before it gets too cold. Mm. You got a trade? Mm. No. Ever thought of getting one? No. You should. I did hairdressing. Yeah. Give me twenty thousand dollars, I could open the best salon in the cosmos. Almost did once. The bank manager said no. Back wipe off in the cup tomorrow. <laughs> I've never backed a horse in my life. It's easy as falling over and breaking your neck. Really? Do me a favour. Um, if I give you the five bucks PJ's giving me, could you back wipe off for me? There'll, there'll be an SP behind the pub, but better than the TAB. Thieving government. I oh, accept, um, you, you're a copper's missus, so you'd better go to the TAB. Could you please? All right. As long as you promise to think about a trade. Oh. No, Bobby. Just 50, mate. Not even if you beg. Monster. Because for your own good, you've got to be strong, matey. Look. I've only got one dollar left. I'll knock 50% off a pie for you. You didn't have any tea last night or breakfast this morning. You're going to fade away to a shadow of a bankrupt racing ride if you don't start looking after yourself. Sauce for gratis too. Don't say I don't take care of my favourite guests. Enjoy it, mate. Hey, Bobby, how are you? Oh, good, mate. Sorry, mate. Best I can do. Dick Jacobs coming in this morning? Yep, we're running dangerously short of booze. You owe Grant $5. Hey, when it pops up. It pops up. I tried it today at the station. He said he's supposed to have stolen $15,000. No, that's the victim story. Grant says $500. Yeah, I know. I believe him. Yeah, me too. But can't prove it either way. Then you'd better try a bit harder, hadn't you? Good day, Chris. I didn't know what was in it. There's no way I'd carry that kind of money around. What'd you think was in there? His dirty washing? He said it was accounts records and stuff. He said he didn't want to keep it with him in case he lost it. Well, I thought you didn't know what was in it. <sighs> Only what he told me. I didn't look inside. Maybe you should have, mate. What do you mean? Well, technically speaking, you assisted in the commission of a crime. <sighs> now, Charlie Meadows was trying to scam his insurance company. Yeah, well, I didn't know that. I told you, he said it was paperwork. Oh, come on, mate. That That's sounds... true. He asked me to keep it at home until after the races. Well, and not let on to anybody that you had it, am I right? He said it was paperwork. <laughs> and you believed him, mate? 
He said I could be his penciler. I don't know, Dick. Even if I believe you, I can't speak for the insurance company. I reckon they're going to want to go after both you and Charlie. You know, make an example. On the other hand... What? Well, if you're prepared to stand up in court and testify against Charlie Meadows... I am. I will. <laughs> what do you want about? Ah, I think you know, mate. Like you down the station. Identify some lost property. And I thought Grant Maxwell was a deal. I want to see my lawyer. Ah, it's Sunday. I'll be in church for sure. Come on, Charlie. Let's take a walk. Thanks, PJ. Ah, not a problem, mate. Charlie's being charged now. I'll be in the cell next door so you can yell abuse at him through the wall. I'll tell Apples you've been a mate. Tell him not to thump you. I thought you didn't do electrics. Well, I'm making an exception. Ros is nice. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this is great. <clears throat> uh... Mate, you can't walk in here like you own the place. Yeah, I know, mate, I know. Listen, the Wizard of Id, mate, fair income slays me. Want me to read it out to you? Cartoons never work when they're read out. Yeah, but you haven't heard me read the Wizard, mate. VKC to Mount Thomas Station. Detective Senior Constable Hashem. The Wizard. Now, that's the scrawny little bloke, right? With the stars all over his cloak. OK, now he's a classic. Shut up. What a... Hashem, copy. For information concerning vehicle Alpha Echo Bravo 086, contact St David's Police Station. Thanks, VKC. His fat bind of a missus is coming down the stairs, right? And he hates her, right? Goes back a long way. Can't stand her. Shut but up! They... It's Apple's car. Yeah, well, it's PJ. Uh, what's the story on Alpha Echo Bravo 086? Yes, mate, I know it's Apple's car. Thanks, Will. Head on into a tree. Three Ks this side of St. David's. Fatal. Apples isn't coming? Apples isn't coming. I know it's your big sausage sizzle of the year, Clive, and I appreciate how many snags you've sold for charity, but therein lies the problem, mate. Two caterers and a sausage sizzle is just too much tucker. It all lose out. Sid's this year. Oh, I couldn't agree more, Clive. SIDS is a wonderful cause. Cot death's a terrible thing. I feel something shocking even asking you to call it off. Well, how much would you raise in a reasonable year, roughly? 300 $300 is in the mail. A cheque. My cheque. Because it's a whole heap less than either of those women could go to the jockey club for. Mind you, I'm blood if I know what Nell's going to say. She likes babies. And Sid's has got to be tax deductible, eh? Oh, give me a break, Clive. All right, all right, 350. Don't suppose you feel like standing for on sick of the uh, MT and DJC next year at all? Uh, yeah, I'll see you, Clive. Oh, no! You got a minute? All quiet at church? No one went the collection? Very quiet. Very nice services. Inspiring sermons, apparently. Good. You couldn't resist booking a couple of cars, but Some. Ten. Eleven. Eleven? Well, ten have rung me, complaining. They were parked outside their churches, Noel. Illegally. God, you booked Christians. You don't book Christians. You encourage them. I've got ten of my good, Christian, peaceable townsfolk screaming at me. Christian, atheist... The law does not discriminate, Tom. He just got back from the morgue. Apples is dead. He's dead? Lost control of his car. Head on into a tree. I'm really sorry, mate. 
You're just saying that. You're just saying that because you don't like apples anymore. I wish I was. Boss. I'd like to slip down to Melbourne, Sergeant. Go on. Apples has got a wife and kids. They'll have to be told. Funeral to organise. I'll be back at lunchtime tomorrow at the latest. All right. Off you go. Just be, Jake. Drive carefully. Father, come to bless the track for tomorrow, have you? Come to talk to you about this parking ticket, Tom. Number 11. Sorry? Leave it with me, Father. Appreciate it. 